My view is that the world has been in a depression since 2007 and will remain so for an indefinite period of time. And when you say that, people are, wait a second, you know, we know the definition described as true of Japan, as true in Europe. Not so true in China, but China's a special case. There's a lot of, they cook. How do you cut interest rates 4%? The answer is you can't. You cut them to zero and then you're stuck. You're at that zero bound. And the evidence is good that negative rates don't work. So then what do you do? We're going to put some money again. Modern monetary theorists would say, yes, I disagree. And I think the Fed disagrees, but as shown by their own actions, they're trying to reduce the balance sheet. So what the Fed is doing, they're trying to raise rates, get the balance sheet down, maybe two trillion, a little bit less, so that when the recession hits, they can run the playbook again. They can cut rates and if necessary, do QE. But here's the dilemma. Can you normalize interest rates and normalize the balance sheet without causing the recession that you're prepared to cure? That's the conundrum. I think the answer is no. I think that actually in trying to tighten to get ready for the next recession, they're probably going to cause the recession. There's no data, there's no time series that tells you how this is going to play out, except during QE, what did we see? We did not see a lot of inflation, but we saw asset prices blow up stocks real estate, you know, other asset categories, they all went up a lot. So it seems at least kind of first order intuitive that if you print money, asset prices go up. If you destroy money, asset prices are going to go down. Uh, so what the Fed is doing, they're destroying money, reducing the money supply. So they're really double tightening. In addition to the four rate hikes a year, this reduction in the balance sheet is probably equivalent, this is an estimate, probably equivalent to four more rate hikes per year. So they're actually tightening, probably going to throw the economy into recession. Fed has never forecast a recession. They have a terrible forecasting record. This will happen before they know it. Of course, we all know that stocks will go down. So based on that, I'm not bullish on growth. I'm bearish on stocks. People say well, gold hasn't gone up a lot. It's true. I'm surprised it hasn't gone down more given the tightening environment that we've described. So gold has actually performed fairly well given the environment. Now, what I do expect is in time, as this signs of recession emerge, yield curve inverts, growth slows, job creation slows down, not a full-scale recession or crash, but just enough warning signs, and the Fed reverses course, all of a sudden they do pause at one of these meetings, gold's going to skyrocket, because that's an admission. At that point, the Fed's throwing in the towel and say, you know what, we really can't escape the room. We can't get back to normal, because when we try, we sink the economy and we have to back off. And that's when gold will shine, uh, no pun intended, because it'll be very clear that the Fed cannot get out of this easy money mode. One thing I never do, I never make a forecast or make a claim without backing it up. There are people out there that are a dime a dozen, you know, this is gonna crash or this is gonna go up or growth is great or it's slow, whatever. That's fine, but you need to back that up with some kind of analytics, some kind of data, some kind of analysis that you can do. And I always do that and I'm always happy to kind of drill down on that. So the methodology I use is quite different from what Wall Street forecasters use. First of all, I'll just spend a minute on what Wall Street does and what most analysts do because it's badly flawed. It's no surprise that, you know, every year the Fed does a one-year forward forecast. So in 2009, they predict 2010, 2010, they predict 2011, so on. Same thing for the IMF, same thing for Wall Street. They are off by orders of magnitude year after year. I mean, how can you be wrong by a lot? eight years in a row and then have any credibility. And again, the same thing with Wall Street. You know, you see these charts. The chart will show the actual path of interest rates or the actual path of growth. And then along the timeline, which is the x-axis, they'll show what people were predicting at various times. The predictions are always way off the actual path. And there's actually good social science research that shows that economists do worse than trained monkeys uh, in terms of forecasting. And I don't say that in a disparaging way. Here's the science. A monkey knows nothing, right? So if you have a binary outcome, up, down, high, low, growth, recession, and you ask a monkey, they're going to be right half the time and wrong half the time because they don't know what they're doing. So you're going to get a random outcome. Economists are actually wrong more than half the time for two reasons. One, their models are flawed. Number two, what's called herding or group behavior. And economists would rather be wrong in the pack than go out on a limb and maybe be right, but if it turns out you're not right, you're exposed. There are institutional constraints. People want to protect their jobs. You know, they're worried about other things and getting it right. So the forecasting record is pretty bad. The reasons for that, they use equilibrium models. Capital markets are not an equilibrium system, so forget your equilibrium model. They use the efficient market hypothesis, which is all the information's out there. You can't beat the market. Markets are not efficient. We know that. They use stress tests, which are flawed because they're based on the past, but we're always outside the past. You know, the future could be extremely different. If the next crisis is worse, 
There's nothing in that history that's going to tell you how bad it can get. And so they assume prices move continuously and smoothly. So price can go from here to here or from here to here. But as a trader, you can get out anywhere in between. And that's where all these folio insurance models and stop losses come from. That's not how markets behave. They go like this. They just gap up. They don't hit those in-between points where they gap down. You're way underwater or you missed a profit opportunity before you even knew it. So in other words, the actual behavior of markets is completely at odds with all the models that they use. So it's no surprise the forecasting is wrong. So we talked earlier about business cycles, recessions, depressions, and that's conventional economic analysis. That's really thinking in terms of growth, trend growth, below trend growth, business cycles, etc. Collapse or financial panic is something different. A financial panic is not the same as a special drawing right. Next year is not the strawberry daiquiri in the rocks, it's a special drawing right. It's world money, that's the easiest way to think about it. They do have a printing press. And so that will be the only source of liquidity in the next crisis because the central banks, if they don't normalize before the crisis, and it looks like that they won't be able to, they're going to run out of runway, and they can't expand the balance sheet beyond a small amount because they'll destroy confidence. Where does the liquidity come from? The answer is it comes from the IMF. So that's the kind of global monetary reset that monetary...